Hi, how are you? Thanks for joining. We're going to make a color pen today. Okay, we have our color can, clean and dry. We're going to start a little hole here. Just where you have this union. We start cutting around. Don't worry, you have a jagged edge. We're going to get rid of it later. Not to cut yourself with can. Do another cut down to the base of the can. Go like this. We get rid of the bottom of the can. I have to take this off. To be This long piece. We're going to divide it in four equal parts. Four parts. Okay, we'll take one. I'm going to for this six millimeter rod. This for this six millimeter rod, we need like two centimeters in the base. We're gonna draw it here. Two centimeters here, up to here. Yes. And of course, with our scissors. Okay, then we're gonna fold it. Half, but we're just gonna pinch here on the top. This. We go out here. We can cheat. We take a rod, piece of tape. Put the rod here. Gonna tape it very tight. Okay. 
some more tape. So look at this. And we're gonna cut have to make a cut, not pointy but curvy. That's why like this. Just a little bit more. Put it here to draw this part that contains that. The ink, it holds the ink. It looks that the point is really close, so I'm gonna go with the back part of the knife, like this, so it's open now. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, so we've made six strokes, ten strokes. We've made all the possibilities of the color pen. So this, take and thin, take and thin. Horizontals. In horizontals. Yes, yes. I'm going to make circles now. It's kind of sorry.
Yes, Cristina, <laughs> it goes fast. Oh, here it goes. You like see. No, I can stretch. C. I'm going to use a lot of ink, a lot of paper. And now that I've seen the possibilities of the color pen, I start making textures. Okay. With a little water. And I start learning how much, how many strokes I can do without charging, without recharging. I make thin, I make thick. Sun When you do horizontals, you have to put your elbow in. Perpendicular to the table and the thin strokes. You have to research often. Floor of my studio is full of papers. Doing. Playing with. Next
trying to feel the spaces, the blank spaces. Now that I've played with lines and textures, I'm going to start working with rhythm. Okay, with rhythm. Make it thick and thin strokes. Can you see how I manipulate the color pen? From this position to make the thin strokes. Little pigment, putting in some long strokes. My goal is to keep this even, keep the rhythm. Of like the sound, some people feel disturbed with this sound. Oh, I forgot to, to add more long strokes. So, a long one. I have a question. How yes. how how um how long does your color pen last when you you know use it at this at this like uh, level? It, it depends. It depends. I I I put a lot of pressure in it, so sometimes I break the point. I'm not sure if you can see it. No, it's, this is this one here with the but the point is broken, but I still use it because I like how it. This is the one with the broken point. Mm. Can you see? Yeah. It's flat. It's flat, but I, I still use it. And how how much does it last? No, I, I don't have a time. I truly don't have a time because it depends on on how you how you push it and what you do with it. If I uh, exercise with like this one, very large strokes and and make it splatter that it make the it makes resistant the paper does uh, resist and it splatters and it breaks the point. So sorry, I don't have an answer an exact answer for that. Paper. And now I'm going to add some circle to my exercise. You see here I make a counter curve.
Now I'm going to add a little space. And I can keep on creating these exercises and mix things. And we'll start with a circle. Like I said, there's one question from someone who just joined. Um, it's asking if there's a specific way to hold the pen or the nib. In a specific way to hold it, I guess at an angle, or is it straight up or is it depending on how you cut it? The pen, it has, it always has to be with a point out like that here. And if you want more or less splatter, you can bend it like here. When you go down, you go like this, and you go up, you turn it like this to go with, with a point, just with a point. And down, you put it side, here's the point. Does that answer your question? I think it does. Mo, does that answer your question? But I love how you're, you're switching back and forth. That, that really helps in the consistency of line. Like the way you flip the pen. Yeah, it helps. Yes, you have to, you have to manipulate it a lot. That's why. If you have, uh, sometimes I have this a, a, a stick very thin. I put extra tape here so it's easier to Turn it. Keep on making jumps like this. Um, let's see. Okay, now we're good. We're gonna try some letters. Go 
More ink. Start with. Now we're going to write something. I'm going to use the text that I use for my artworks.
perfect direct mixed rules. Now I'm going to make it intertwined. That's, about, that's how I came up with the, the text that look like bangs. Very tight. Create a texture. I'm thinking about the blank space. I can then cut out. I don't even um, write following a line. I can go like this. I can also make up letters. This is a P. Yes, I have a curiosity. When you're writing with this pen, do you normally draft out the position of the words or you just always just write directly without no. planning? No, I don't plan it in advance. I try to look at it and fill the blank spaces. Here, for example, if I want to make, because what I'm trying to do here is to create a pattern, not a pattern, but a, a texture that I can layer Cut out. See. So, like linking things together, is it? Yes. Uh, Here, I made uh, a huge blank space. It should have been filled. There you go, and I can and I can keep on making words from here. Here's another text. Okay, that's it. Does anybody have questions for Lisette or any uh, comments? I have a question. Um, have you tried experiments with different brands of aluminum cans? Different? Different brands of, of aluminum cans. Yes, I've tried beer cans. I've tried other sodas. And they are all the same. 
and I'm not sure if it's um, fabricated for Latin America all the same, but I haven't found any difference. I haven't tried the, I've, I've seen some people do color pens with uh, tuna cans, but they are very stiff. I think the value of the color pen is that it's very flexible. Are you taping it to support the, the pen or to hold ink? Yes, it's taped. Yes, see, but here. what's the purpose? Do you do that for oh, stability? So, so, it stays, so it stays closed and holds the ink. Okay. Yes. Sometimes oh. it doesn't work. Sometimes I make one and it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't stay closed and all the ink drips. A thinner metal is actually preferred for the color pen yes. so that it gives you the flexibility. Right? Yes. So other way you don't get any splatters and that's kind of the beauty of, of color pen strokes. Um, you were talking about the thickness of the metal. Does it mean that the thicker the metal, the thicker the strokes are? Or the thinner the metal, the, the thinner the strokes are? Does, does that actually make um, any difference with the thickness of the metal? The thicker, the thicker, if the, the metal is thick, you won't get many splatters because it won't be flexible when you make the stroke on the paper and it will be very stiff. Just write that and let me show you. I see what you mean, yes. Now I understand what you're trying to say, yes. Yeah, but, but of course, show it nonetheless. Okay. If you, the, the strokes thin or thick depends on how you put your color pen on the paper. If you go like this, you're gonna get thin strokes because you're only writing with the tip. If you go like this, you're putting this side on the paper and it, right. you're going to get a thicker stroke. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Lisette, one more question. So I've been trying to wash my old pen and I always get the wood submerged into the water every time I wash it, especially when I tape it very tight around here. Like, do you tape it so that you, when you wash it, do you remove the metal part or do you just wash no. the whole thing? I wash, I, I wash it all around. Okay. It's, it looks dirty. It looks very dirty. You yes. See here. Because my it's, ink will go into the wood. So. <laughs> yeah, you, you can wash that. You can wash that. Look here. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that, that looks like mine, my old one. <laughs> yeah. That's how they finish. <laughs> and with the tip chopped. The sign of a well-used cola pen. Yeah. I have lots of them. <laughs> this new one, look how I ended up. Oh, wow. <laughs> All covered in ink. There are also many, I've seen variations of this color pen where it's it's got a thick edge and a thin edge and things like that. But so far I've I've only managed to make this one oh. that works. Yeah. Yes, I guess I guess I have another other these are not color pens. These are uh, Marina, how do they call you? How do you call them? Tiralinias. Oh. Ruling pens. Rolling pen. Yes. Mm. Rolling pens. This one. Sorry, I, I, mean, I was made it. These are called lutis. Uh, the 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 lady that does them uh, has named them in very different ways, like moss, butterfly, uh, number three, number four. She has almost twelve different uh, tools. And one of them, the, the little one, uh, the tiny little one, the one, that one, I asked her to do it. 
I gave her the folded pen, the, the bronze folded pen from, from John Neal. And when she made them, they were really so good that now uh, John Neal is purchasing these uh, tools from her. So she, she has made a good business <laughs> producing these, these tools, but she has created some new ones. You can visit her uh, webpage. It's called Lutis, L-U-T-H-I-S. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's called uh, Marina Devon and Devos, and she uh, she's a very she she is a calligrapher herself, and she does uh, demos from her tools, so she knows what she's doing. Uh, and of course, if you perhaps if you want to somebody to do a tool for you, she could do something new if you if you're interested. But that's just what happened with me. <laughs> I'm so just you, telling my own story. Marina, so you agree. custom a tool for yourself with hers, and then now it's being sold in John Yu. Sorry? Do you, so you, you asked her to custom a specific tool just for yourself, and then now it's being sold at John Yu, is it? No, no, yes, yes. Because at the beginning, uh, there were no tools here, and none, none. And so, when we, the, 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 the people who were lucky to be able to travel abroad and take courses around the world, we would bring back to Argentina some of the, the ideas or the tools that we saw that were done within a conference, let's say. And at some point, I, uh, I don't know, because in, in last, last uh, in the last lecture Thomas Ingmeyer gave, he mentioned a tool I introduced to him. Mm -hmm. And it was done with yogurt, plastic of the yogurt cup, a staple to, uh, to keep it together. And he was using that. So I was surprised. I, I had forgotten that, that I introduced that. But I'm, I'm talking about uh, uh, maybe 1990. It was so, so difficult to find any kind of tool that who, whoever returned back from, from abroad will bring maybe professional tools and people will try to cast something similar, but very, of course, you know, very, we could never do a, an automatic pen because that is so technological in a way. But these tools actually did help because uh, they, would produce the same kind of strokes, not with the same precision, but in a way they were more like personal or more like uh, gestural or because they weren't so perfect. So, so that's how it, like literally how, it, that is how uh, calligraphy developed in Argentina due to, mm. to her in a way and to her uh, production of all sorts of tools and inventing many others and most of them were trying to recreate the professional ones um, yeah like what you said about the strokes right i was just mentioning in the chat for the set that you know any hesitancy in your stroke shows through so obviously that I, I'm, I'm just amazed by how the set she your strokes don't have any hesitation even the thin strokes especially it's just yes, it's that is actually because it's she is trained to work with that. She mm -hmm. it's it seems effortless, but that is not effortless. That is training. She has worked so hard. She has used it so much, and she knows what she's doing. That she's just flowing. Uh, but it is a matter of training, as just as everything else. Uh, the more you train, the, the better you you get, and the more effortless it seems for the rest of the people. But it's it's there is a training. Let's say you should be proud of yourself. It's a dance across paper. <laughs> Excuse me, you did. You should be proud of yourself. You're dancing across the paper. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I like to play, and I, I was thinking about este, Ernesto Cachato Marina. Uh, he's an Italian who does uh, uh, art instruments to write. Uh, he's awesome. I, I, I saw him uh, in the Semana de la Calligrafía in Peru. 
I always watch his, his lectures because he creates such odd instruments that they are like awesome. The, the kind of strokes they can do. Maybe you can show something or or maybe does he has a, a web page or something? Yes, he, he, he's, from Italy. He's, on Very, he's on Instagram. Very knowledgeable. Uh, he's kind of a lutist. Right. I wrote, in a way. I wrote his name in the chat. He has very odd instruments. And I just learned from Brody Noshvanda the compen. Oh? <laughs> it's that? a comb. It? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a comb. It makes really nice. Let me show you. Uh, yeah, so. It's one of uh, Brody's most uh, favorite tools, uh, experimental tools. Yeah. He's been doing a lot of work since the last, I don't know, the last time I saw him in a, in a conference Com in 2011, he was using the comb pen and was using, was making- Pulling a, pen and comb pen. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yo, making yo demos. Made, yes. He always made, yo in the end, are made with the comb pen. That's beautiful, actually. The yes. textures, yeah. It's very expressive writing, of course. Mm. Oh, these resourceful people. Yes, I'm looking up their, their Instagrams now, like Ernesto. Yeah, go ahead with Ernesto. Ernesto has very odd and very strange instruments. And I think eventually they will come out of um, uh, the light, but still <laughs> not in the... I don't, know. I don't know. He's not reaching all the people he he would have. A, he should. He should have. He should have yeah. He's brilliant. Brilliant. He's brilliant. brilliant. He just he just wrote a book, not about the instruments, but about letters. Yes, he's uh, also, also he's very knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah. He knows a lot about yeah. history of writing and so on. I just found his Instagram. I'm going to share the his username in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> his tools are so funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just very amused right now. <laughs> yes, he used clothes pin. Clothes pin, okay. And Steve. Marina, you have a what? question whether, do you still have the yogurt cola pen? Do you still use the yogurt Yes, um, I used to have, uh, I still have those. Uh, the thing is that all these kind of tools, they are, they have a very short life, of course. If you are using them, they will get uh, chopped or, or bended or, or, or break. Uh, so actually you have to redo them over and over and over again. Mm. So I do keep some of them from the past, just maybe like a memory or, or to know how to do it again, if I want to use them. But, um, but yes, they, I do, I, I still keep them, yeah. Eventually at some of my, I will, I could show you how to do one, but, um, but, no, but People have all the professional ones and they just don't <laughs> care anymore. And we have nothing and we are working with stick and stone. <laughs> and Aww. now people are interested in knowing how to do something with stick and stone, <laughs> creating fire. <laughs> but that's the way the world is. So it's okay. Mm, that's true. Let's say, let's say, you, you're showing us a whole container of pens, right? How many do you have? <laughs> How many pens? Yes. Well, let's see. These are only the, well, I have the color pens. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> and I have that, that, those, those uh, have no, no price. They are, they are nothing. They are just uh, uh, recycling materials. So yes. you can do That's a hundred. And, and you do several at, a, at, a, at the same time and you keep them. Aww. 
Uh, maybe cute. you're you're on a barbecue talking with friends and you're creating your own. <laughs> because there are lots of tins of, of beer or whatever. And so while you're talking, you're crafting your uh, cola pen. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. That's and what the, I did. Was it's amazing how fast you, you have practiced, how much you have practiced with that to achieve that rhythm that you already have. Yeah. Well, I, I had practice already with the with the ruling pens. Mm. It's kind oh. of the same. So okay. here you have to manage uh, how much platter you want. Thank you so much, Lisette, for sharing. Thank you, Marina. Yeah. If Thank you, you want to. If you want to show, uh, you know, your works on Instagram or the color pen that you made, please, uh, you know, tag, tag Lisette so she'll know uh, what you have done. Yeah. Thank you.